Think you can tell your friend inside there to turn it up a few hundred Kelvin? I could. However, it might shatter the containment spell preventing him from incinerating this facility. Uh, I think we're good. And just in time. The Forge has certainly changed. Right. Caretaker said this all happened after your siesta. What spooky castle would be complete without its own Babylonian demon-powered furnace? Sumerian fire demon. His name is Babs. Oh, now it all makes sense. Well, once you get past the esoteric terror of the situation, I've found this thing actually has some uses. Molecular bonding, breaking down evil gamma serums, fashion accessorizing... <clears throat> yes, speaking of... Oh, right. It's ready. Your armor seemed to offer minimal protection against the Venom creature. I noticed. Yeah, I thought you could use an upgrade. Well hammered, well fired. Caretaker did not mention that you two are such skilled smithies. Yep, I am Iron Smithy. Perhaps you should just try it on. I think I could have used a cloak. Stylish, damn near indestructible, and we even got the size right. Not bad for our first collaboration. I still think it could have benefited from a cloak. You think everything could benefit from a cloak? I do not. Oh, I've heard the things you whisper to your cape when you think no one's listening. Ah, oh, the joys of sharing a workspace. And I'll have you know this cloak has helped me save the universe from extinction on countless occasions. Could you at least tell it to stop rearranging things on my side of the cave? I have, but it considers you something of a slob. You know, I have a great psychiatrist in the city. Maybe you should talk to him. Although, I think he's working for Hydra right now. Hunter, your new attire suits you quite well. But how are you holding up on the inside? I know it's easy to look upon me and simply see the universe's utmost authority on all things mystical and macabre, Hunter. However, in addition to being Earth's Sorcerer Supreme, I am also your doctor. You mean a physician of the medical arts? You jest. I assure you, Hunter, I do not jest. They don't call me Mr. Strange, now do they? Except for Tony. Your awakening ritual was admittedly a touch more chaotic than I had originally intended, and well, after your violent encounter with Venom, my oath to Hippocrates compels me to check in with you. Simply put, how do you feel? You lost much yesterday, Doctor. I am the one who should be asking you how you are feeling. I appreciate that, Hunter. I admit I did not expect the child of Lilith to have the capacity for such empathy. And you're right, of course. I, for one, do not know if I will ever feel 100% again after the events of yesterday. I still can't believe what transpired, the sanctum, all that knowledge, Wanda, lost, swallowed whole by the black mouth of that foul venom creature. With all my resources, all my gifts, I should have seen this outcome spelled out in the sacred geometry of this universe years ago. But I miscalculated. Lilith's power has placed a dark shroud over us all, Doctor. You are not alone in this. Your words are appreciated. Still, I must not allow the underlying truth of the situation to become shrouded as well. It's not just the Sanctum Sanctorum that was lost yesterday. It was my protege, Wanda. She was, is, my charge, my responsibility, and I failed her. But I am determined. 
determined not to let that happen with you, Hunter, which is why I am here to answer any questions you may have. Perhaps my wisdom may benefit you more than it has me thus far. A creature on the roof. You have run into it before. Unfortunately, yes. In the simplest of terms, Venom is an alien species living in symbiosis with a human known as Eddie Brock. He's something of a fixture in New York these days, but typically his hijinks are confined to harassing Spider-Man. My mother has a gift for bringing out the worst in people. Yes, and in this case, I happen to be the direct victim of her ambition. I fear the Sanctum may never be the same. A cr he How does Eddie feel about this arrangement? He seems to relish the experience. And under Lilith's spell, they've clearly become more cohesive than ever before. Hey. It sounds like Spider-Man is Venom's nemesis. Maybe he has some insight. Of course. I have no doubt Spider-Man will prove to be an invaluable asset in the ongoing fight against both Venom and Lilith. Tell me about your Sanctum's wards of protection. I have never heard of a protection spell that powerful. In your time, I'm sure you encountered a variety of minor wards and protective spells. The Sanctum Santorum was shielded by one such incantation, but greatly amplified by the convergence of ley lines. And no one has ever broken the spell? Ever? There's always a first for everything, but I had honestly never imagined a scenario in which the wards could be broken. Perhaps it was arrogance on my part, but Lilith is among the more cunning enemies we've ever faced. It, the ley lines? Often dismissed as pseudoscience in the modern day, ley lines actually represent the convergence of magical energies formed within the Earth itself. Ancient civilizations built their temples along these lines, tapping into the power flowing through them. Two such lines converge at the Sanctum's location. Needless to say, the wards benefit greatly. Tell the Will the wards ever provide the same protection that they had? It may be possible to undo the damage, but now that a weakness has been exposed, I'll have to rethink my approach entirely. Tony did offer a military-grade laser protection grid, should I be so inclined to go that route? How did Wanda come into your care? Wanda's story is quite tragic and perhaps not mine to tell. There was an accident on the Abbey grounds not long ago involving Agatha. That must have been some accident. Agatha had been teaching Wanda, hoping she would learn to control her immense but very raw power. As their training progressed, Wanda was encouraged to push herself further. Eventually, she pushed too far. How did Wanda... Wa the and you have been keeping an eye on her? You make it sound like I've been guarding her. My role here is merely one of friendship for as long as she needs it. One thing is certain. She refuses to step foot on the Abbey grounds for any reason. That kind of power sounds like it could be dangerous. We don't truly know the extent of Wanda's power, and in that respect, you two are very similar. Were she here now, I think you would have found her to be a kindred spirit. I feel like everyone is avoiding mention of Agatha. I 
can't say I'm surprised, but I'm afraid it's really not my place. You should speak to Sarah about her when you're ready. Let us talk later. Visit whenever you like. It's not often I get to converse with a true legend. What is this? Fascinating. That is something. Man, I just wish I could have brought my brother Gabe along. He'd love this. The other day, Tony Stark made some crack about avocado toast. Why are the elderly so obsessed with food I've never eaten? Ugh, it's hard to watch TV when the world is falling apart around us. Feels like we should be doing more. I would love to get some hoverboards. I really want to race Ghost Rider on hoverboards. Tony Stark used to be the ultra-rich jerk I You have problem? Nobody knows exactly what it is you remember, so they'll probably want to hold your hand for a minute. Don't take it personally. I don't know why people keep bringing up arm wrestling. Have you ever seen me arm wrestle? Probably not, and there's a reason for that. If only the world knew about our exclusives. I hope we're not letting our standards down with these new recruits. There are cracks in this wall. This is witch sign. Perhaps a witch from the Salem Coven made this. Intriguing. Regardless of what Mr. Stark thinks, the mirror table was guiding our hand reliably for centuries before the advent of computers. I couldn't begin to count the number of missions we've planned in this room over the centuries. Ambushes, sieges, open warfare. We did a bit of everything back in the day. I've always considered this room to be the unofficial heart of the Abbey. Sure, there are quite a few other areas of interest, but this is where the action comes together.
Carol seems like the perfect fit for the War Room. I already trust her implicitly when it comes to our tactical readiness. I've probably spent more time in this room than anywhere else in the Abbey. It's where I feel most comfortable. Regardless of what Mr. Stark thinks, the mirror table was guiding our... Goes it Hunter, or is it the Hunter? I hate to admit it, but somehow this ancient forge puts any arc reactor I've got to shame. Who would have thought mystically bound demon power would be so damn energy efficient? Or carbon neutral? Certainly got that new suit of yours done a lot faster than I expected. Speaking of, what's the verdict, boss? It is nice having an armorer on demand. Anytime. I tried to make this version a little less palatable to that symbiote thing. I was this close to making it menthol flavored. But tools are just one part of the equation. You gotta know how to use them too. You were out, what, 300 years before we woke you from your eternal rest? I'm betting you have questions, so ask away, Hunter. I take it this new version is a technological marvel? Impact-resistant carbon composites, some patent-pending alloy mesh, and a few touches from Dr. Spooky over there. And hey, the built-in communicator means we can talk to each other without sending a raven. I thought the old one was pretty nice, actually. So did Venom. I think he's still picking a few pieces of it from his teeth. Is all this magic a threat to your new technology? It might surprise some people to hear this, but I do like some things with rules. Isotope decay, magnetic fields, and gamma oscillation make a lot more sense to me than Eye of Newt, bat wings, and a sprinkle of sunshine. <sighs> At least they did before everything changed. Gamma seems to be a reoccurring theme these days. Oh, you think I'm bad? You should ask Bruce. Actually, don't. He's been really sensitive since... You know what? Never mind. Seen anything strange around here? What, other than my roommate? Boom! Roasted! But on a more serious note, this place is legitimately haunted. Mirrors look back at you. My room rearranges itself, and worst of all, Magic. Cats. Was it suspiciously elusive? Even for a cat? Actually, yes. Thought I was going crazy there for a second, but clearly I'm still firing on all cylinders. It just poofed in next to me out in the yard. Small, black, furry. Cute little thing. Probably some kind of shape-shifting monster knowing this place. What sort of things are you doing in here? Oh, that's right. You were out a while. Basically, we've got a gigantic demon inside the magic box here that provides near limitless power for whatever we might need. Sounds insane, but sometimes it's easier to just go with it. I am 
impressed with your resourcefulness. From where you're standing, I could see that. Still, I doubt I'll be branding one of these with the Stark Industries logo anytime soon. You must have an interesting origin story of your own. Well, just your typical American boy. Pops was a founding member of the military industrial complex. Mom, a famous socialite. Tragedy struck when I lost them both in a car crash, which turned out to be a hit from a rival corporation. I spent my early teens at MIT, trying to clear my head. I was all set to follow in Dad's footsteps as a war profiteer. Then one day, fortune shined on me, in the form of some errant shrapnel that lodged itself just above my heart. So I did what anybody in that situation would do. I built a super suit and started fighting crime. You seem well-adjusted enough, considering. Exactly. Which means there's hope for you yet. I find these apocalypse scenarios will save you tons of therapy. Thanks for catching me up on things. Anytime. Oh, and speaking of things. Remember that uh, creepy gamma goop you found from that hopped-up Hydra soldier? Well, I gave it a peek, and it explains a lot. If you have a minute, meet me at the anvil over there, and I'll walk you through it. I promise it'll be worth your time. Just can't get enough of old Tony, huh? Don't worry, I'm used to it. What's on your mind, boss? Now, I doubt advanced gamma thermodynamics was a hot topic at ye olde demon hunting school, so I'm just going to give you the condensed version. I appreciate that. Closest I've ever seen to this substance is pumping through Bruce's veins. Part gamma accelerant, part unknown element. Calling it COIL for now, given its unique atomic structure. Man, I love acronyms. This stuff is more volatile than Nick Fury on a Monday morning. But Hydra doesn't seem to mind. They are using it to get stronger. Exactly. A few drops would make your average salamander look like Fin Fang Foom. Thankfully, with a little help from Dr. Spooky and our haunted oven over here, I think two can play at this game. You are not suggesting we start injecting ourselves with it? No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Though I can see some future applications for my energy drink line, I was thinking we apply this stuff towards upgrading our equipment. I like where this is going. Just give me a little time here and I can whip up some pretty fun toys. How about we give Hydra a taste of their own gamma-powered medicine for a change? Uh, give me a sec. Okay, what's up? You're welcome, Hunter. Presence dares enter these halls? Oh, sorry, it's you. Hello, Hunter. Let us talk later. Visit whenever you like. It's not often I get to converse with a true legend. Kiddo.
Welcome to the yard. At least that's what we're calling it these days. Caretaker put me in charge of your training. Too bad she didn't listen to me yesterday. Now that we know what we're up against, I think we can all use the practice. Any questions? I did, but they are about you. Right when it's time to train? From all Sarah told us about you, she never described you as lazy. I learn faster if I understand the person who trains me. I can respect that. Go ahead. Can I ask about you? I guess. Is your name really Blade? Is your name really the Hunter? Yes. Oh, I... really? Your mom, before she became the mother of demons, looked into your cradle and decided to name her firstborn child the Hunter. That is how I understand it. It takes all kinds. So, is your name really Blade? No. What is it? It's private. Is it embarrassing? No, the Hunter. But I only share it with friends. You do not consider me a friend? Not yet. Don't take it personally. How did you become a Dampir? You say that like I had a choice. I was born this way. How is that possible? A vampire bit my mother. Problem was, I was still in the womb. I'm lucky I was even born. Don't know if that's how it always is, but that's the way it went down for me. How long have you been around? I don't exactly know. I think of myself as mid-twenties, maybe. I lost a lot of time. Much of the last century was a blur. I have occasional memories, almost like coming up for air before being yanked back down into the depths. What happened? I killed a lot of vampires. I hadn't lost my mind exactly, but I got into a rhythm and never stopped. Never had a reason to stop. Not until I met Caretaker. And then? She gave me a reason to stop. What brought you to the Abbey? Caretaker. About ten years ago, she brought me back to the real world. Gave me a place to stay until I came back to myself. Did she ever say why? She said she thought I'd be able to kill more vampires if I was acting on more than just instinct. But I know it was more than that. She gave me safe haven here at the Abbey. Something I'd never known. Must have read half the books in the library by the time I headed out. So when she reached out and asked me to be part of this weird little club, of course I showed up. Tell me about the Midnight Suns. All right. Why did you join? Vampire hunting is a solitary affair. Guess I never found the right team. Is that all? No, but that's all I'll share for now. You really want to know? Put in the work. If I trust you, I'll have more to say. What can you tell me about the others? Nothing. Ask them yourself. I'm not asking you to break anyone's confidence. Fine. Which one? Tell me about Nico. She's the youngest, but she acts like she's in charge. Why let her act like that? She's usually right, and she keeps us on track. I didn't think we'd get along, but we wouldn't be the Midnight Suns without her. What makes you say that? She has a lot of heart, and that's why we let her. Anyone else? What about Robbie? He's exactly what he seems. Well, Sort of. He's open with people. Easy going. Sometimes that comes across as dopey, but don't get the wrong impression. He's quick to make friends, and once he does, he's your friend for life. So don't let him down, or I'll hold it against you. 
anyone else. What do you know about magic? Keeps to herself. That is it? She's a private person. Until she lets you in, that's all you need to know. When does she let people in? At her own pace. Respect that, and it'll happen faster than you think. Anyone else? Tell me what you think of Sarah. Well, there are few people I tolerate, even less who I like. Sarah, I respect. She sees the big picture, and we're a part of it. I'd follow her to hell if I had to. And from what I understand, we may have to. I am surprised she commands such respect. I'm surprised that you're surprised. You know what she's like more than any of us. I do. Anybody else? Nobody else. Sure. Do you have any thoughts on the team as a whole? I think we're the only ones aware of the danger Lilith poses to this world. And I think we're pretty green. But enough training will get us through it. Speaking of training, we doing this, or are we gonna keep wasting daylight? I am ready to train. Finally. Let's do this. Later. Do your thing. See you around. What's up? Thanks, Blade. Mm-hmm. Sure. Fine. Speak. Yes? You have problem? Can't wait to pound some steel. Gonna glue my lats three times as big. That's what Robbie sounds like every time he hits the weights. Too much open ground out here. Should probably go back inside. The Avengers take up more and more space out here. I keep expecting to walk outside and trip over a Quinjet. Caretaker always says the Abbey guards its secrets. I always assumed she was speaking literally. So what happens if Magic's portal isn't exactly on target? Do we just topple out of it into the ocean? Boy, that's gonna keep me up at night. Can't wait to pound some steel. Gonna glue my lats three times as big. That's what Rocky sounds like every time. Uh, sorry if I went a little heavy on the aftershave, but it's not easy covering up sulfur. Like the way you move out there, Hunter. Guess Doctor Strange picked the right supernatural demon hunter to resurrect. I'm Carol. Carol Danvers. But you can call me Captain Marvel. Kidding. Carol's fine. Just thought I'd throw a bone to the Avengers PR team. Not gonna lie. Going a few rounds in Vampire Guy's Magic Thunderdome sounds like fun, but we've got bigger fish to fry. Well, not so much fish as that ginormous invulnerable sewer monster that swallowed the Sanctum. Every lock has its key. True, if only a man-eating alien demon monster hadn't eaten ours. But that got me thinking. Strange Caretaker and the rest of the funky bunch can try and magic their way through that shield all they want. <sighs> if my time as a pilot taught me one thing, it's that sometimes you've got to find a workaround. As in Hydra, they've got to know the way inside. Steve's always said they aren't much for talking. But then again, I'm told I can be rather persuasive when I need to be.
Well, if there is any time to put your powers of persuasion to work, now is the time, Captain. Trust me, Hunter, I'm looking forward to it. Hydra's been a thorn in me and Steve's asses for years. Can't wait to remove them for good. Find me in the war room when you're finished here. There's a few things we should discuss. Oh, and Hunter? Welcome back from the dead. Yes? Nothing is certain these days, but these readings are too distinct to ignore. The Gamma signature is... Sorry, Bruce, we lost you. Did you say Gamma? Yes, get. Uh, hang on a second. Come on, Tony. You managed to stream the Super Bowl to a Kree battleship 50 light years out. This should be easy. We waited all year for that game, and you know the Skrulls would have spoiled it for us if they got the chance. Well, can't you just... I don't know. Work my magic again? See, that's the problem. This time I am working with actual magic, and let me tell you, it sucks. The hunter stalks its prey. They turned me down last time I asked for a tour of NORAD, but I guess this is close enough. The more the merrier, right? We can use all the help we can get. Especially if they're willing to live in this place. Trust me, the Stark OS blows away anything that crook over at Hammer Industries can come up with. We even have full Superlink integration now. I'm done trying to integrate my tech with Caretaker's precious mirror table. That thing is way more temperamental than any inanimate object should be. 